today, and I'm going to be sharing with you guys what I consider to be a very exciting idea. It's a culmination of a lot of stuff that I've been working on uh, for about 30 years. Um, I've been involved in media since 1978, and I started in radio, and um, from radio went to work for an ad agency and had an opportunity to work with uh, TV and radio, direct mail, and billboards, and uh, yellow pages, and all different kinds of media. Oh uh, gosh. Sorry about this. Hello? <laughs> That's classic right Is there. This? <laughs> classic Stanford. Oh hi Adrian, hey, I'm in the middle of a presentation right now. Can I call you right back? I have it on my call ready, I'll call you right back. Sweet, thank you. I, I'll call you right back, thanks. Let's put our phones on stun. Yeah. As a Everyone, courtesy. this is a friend of mine, Eric Gudinho. Hello. Hi, Eric. Hello. Eric Hello. is a nice very guys. talented young man who I've met uh, through the publishing business. And um, I've, I have given him an opportunity to do some work, and he's blown me away with the quality of his design work. So I'm going to talk about him a little bit later. But um, so these days, there's some really, really great deals that are available for those who want to promote their business. But um, and I get these deals coming my way all the time. In order to do anything about them, though, you have to have a budget. And if you're dealing with uh, small business people today, many of them uh, are what I consider micro advertisers, meaning. They're not big enough to be on the radar uh, for, for the radio stations or the TV stations or the billboard companies because they really don't have enough money to throw at it. If you're going to hire an advertising agency normally, you're going to deal with somebody. An agency is not going to look at anybody that has less than a five to $10,000 a month advertising budget because you're just not worth their time. But I have a different approach, I have a different philosophy. My feeling is if you get a whole bunch of little minnows together in the same school, uh, you, can actually, you can actually become a whale. And the way you do that is everybody realize, everybody's got a very minimal budget. So let's say your budget is $500 total per month, whether it's uh, you know, your Yellow Pages campaign or whatever, else, whatever you're doing, okay, flyers, door hangers, billboards, whatever you're doing. If that's your total advertising budget, you are what I call a micro-advertiser. You're, you're not on anybody's radar, okay? Because you don't have any money. You can't do anything. The only thing that you can do is this little thing here and this little thing here, and they really don't add up to a whole heck of a lot of much of anything. So what I'm doing is starting an advertising agency, and this agency is going to basically be spoke, focusing on bring together the small businesses, the micro-advertisers, and getting them to put their dollars into a, into a common advertising fund. Out of that common advertising fund, we will be able to afford to do things that on their own, they just could not do. Uh, for example, I got an opportunity yesterday uh, to learn about something that we could do if we had the budget. <laughs> uh, it's an advertising campaign with Comcast Spotlight that will put you all over television. They'll produce a TV commercial and, and air you all over, the, all over television for less than what you'd pay for radio. Hmm. Uh, those of you who have never done radio, raise your hand. Nobody is in here, they're micro-advertisers, so they haven't done radio either. They're not on the radio people's, the station's advertising radar either. But um, this is an affordable campaign, it's $2,500, and that includes the cost of producing the commercial, and airing it 400 times all over local TV. For one month or? Yeah, and uh, it would come at, you know, so this is a great deal, but not if you don't have the money. It could be, we could be handing out thousand dollar bills on the, on the corner, but if you don't have the money, you know. So what we're looking to do is to create a budget, and that budget is gonna, I, I believe, be funded by little advertisers who can commit small amounts of money on a regular basis into this fund. And so, um, I'll just give you an example. Let's say we got everybody in this room, let's say everybody in this room was a, was a small business owner, and everybody had a 
$300 budget, and that was it. That's all they had that, for everything. That would be a micro-advertiser. That's only $10 a day. So if you take that little budget and you throw it in a pot with... Uh, 12 others. 50 others. You have money. Now you have some money. <laughs> what can you do with $15,000 that you can't do with 300? Just about everything. You could do billboards, you could do yellow pages, you could do newspaper, you could do... You could, you could buy your own TV show. You could have your own TV show that would actually be all over the place. Aired a lot, not just once or twice, but all the time, regularly. There's a lot of things you could do. But on your own, you can't do a hill of beans. So um, basically, if you're a wannabe whale, but you have a minnow budget, uh, then you should definitely come and talk to me, because there's lots of great opportunities that we can do, but you're going to have money. So um, most advertising agencies will not touch you, like I said, unless you've got a five to ten thousand dollar month budget. But this co-op has the potential to be the biggest whale in these waters. Now, why is that? Because if you take three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, and you multiply it times thirty or forty or fifty people, what do you got? You got the biggest ad budget in the whole market as a group, right? Absolutely. That's right. So we can create a whale of an advertising budget by recruiting the efforts of small minnows. This, these are, this is what we, the kinds of things that I want to be doing. I want to be doing broadcast, cable TV, streaming video campaigns, radio, billboards, digital signage. Have you guys seen that digital billboard there in Turlock? Right yes. off the freeway? Yes. Well, Imagine miniature digital billboards in high traffic captive audience locations all over places like the gym that you work out, the uh, sushi house that you go eat dinner in. You gotta wait and there's your captive audience, you're not going anywhere. Right? And we have a digital sign right there promoting your business. But even more importantly, how would you like to be a story? And that's where um, I, I kind of part from the rest of the crowd because I really believe that people pay more attention to stories than they do to ads. And so I would rather turn you into a story and do an interview with you and feature that and do a feature interview with you on the radio, do a feature interview with you on television, do a feature interview with you in, and feature that as a story or an advertorial. I think that's going to have more impact than any amount of advertising. And the reason I say that is because I've spent a million dollars worth of my own and other people's money in advertising. I believe there are effective advertising campaigns that you can initiate, but I don't think that anything is going to be as effective as, um, as you being turned into a story. Does anybody know what it means to go viral? Jim probably knows. You probably know. If you can create a video clip or that's kicky, that's funny, that's a little weird, maybe that's entertaining, but that also gives people some information about what you do, and that video clip goes viral, literally it's going to be seen by millions of sets of eyeballs. But you can still go viral even if you don't have millions of sets of eyeballs, as long as you're being seen by the sets of eyeballs that you want to see it. So for example, if they're not in the market for real estate, who cares if they see your real estate piece? But if they are in the market for real estate, even if there are fewer sets of eyeballs, if they're the right sets of eyeballs, that's good, right? It's like me, when I, uh, my, if I got, if, let's say I drove out there and I got my car in a car accident and I lost, my car's gone. All of a sudden, I'm starting to pay attention to car stuff, right? It's not, average, it's not junk mail now. If I got a direct mail piece in the mail about car stuff, I'm zoning in on it. Why? Because I have a need, right? Um, so one of the things that, that we wanted to do is um, I've talked to lots of small business people and tried to get their feedback. Because let's face it, the old things that used to work two, three years ago, they ain't working anymore. Or you have to make adjustments because the market's different. Am I right? Bill's going, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's true. So um, Using the power of co-op advertising, let's face it, radio stations have been using co-op advertising forever. So, so have the magazines, so have the newspapers. How do you think they publish the newspaper? They got one big ad? No. They got